How's it going guys? Today we're going to be doing a beginner's study guide to the part 107 test. So if you're looking to fly your drone commercially, this is the perfect guide for you. I would recommend just listening to the video first and then listening to it a second time but writing down your notes on things that are hard to remember. Let's not waste any more time and hop right into it. So it may look intimidating right now, but these are the most important numbers and basic numbers to remember when going into your part 107 test. I've gone through dozens of videos and I've collected all the information to best serve you and make sure that you remember this information the easiest way possible. Okay, first off, you guys, I tried to really make sure that these sentences were as short as possible and as clear as possible because the FAA likes to throw words in there that are confusing and unnecessary. And every single key phrase or number that I have a, a box around, I've highlighted certain you know numbers like 0 0.55, those are the numbers to write down. All right, so that being said, uh, 0 0.55 pounds is the minimum weight a drone has to be before you register it. Uh, DJI makes a lot of 249 gram drones, which is just below that weight. So, yep, it's as simple as that. 0.55 pounds, 250 grams is the minimum weight. 55 pounds is the maximum weight a drone can be before it is not considered to be part, part of the Part 107. See what I did there? I put the minimum and the maximum weight together to group them up because they're kind of the same category question. Simple as that, 55 pounds is the maximum weight a drone can be. Uh, you must be 13 years old to legally register your drone. If you're 12 years old, unfortunately you can't do it. You might have to have your parents do it for you. But, yep, you must be 13 years old to legally register your drone. You cannot take the Part 107 test until you are 16 years old. So, you can fly it recreational. When you're 13, 14, 15, and if you want to start making money with it or doing some jobs for, you know, mom and dad's business, you have to be 16 years old. And if you're 16 years old taking your part 107, hey, respect to you. That is awesome. Okay, next up is 24 months. The test will be valid for 24 months, two years, until you have to retest. To keep up with the current changes because the drone rules are always changing since it's so new i mean here in five to ten years the rules and laws will probably be completely different because as u.s citizens we're going to see a lot of drones in the sky in a lot of different places i mean they're already testing them right now in certain states so 24 months 400 feet get 400 feet stuck in your head repeat it to yourself uh three million times if you have to 400 feet AGL. AGL is above ground level. That's just as important to remember as 400 feet. 400 feet AGL is the height that you can fly your drone at. Not anything above without authorization. 400 feet AGL is the flight that you can legally fly your drone at commercially with your Part 107 and recreationally. But yeah. This goes hand in hand with 400 feet. You can fly 400 feet around or above buildings. So say you're doing an inspection on a building like you see right here. Um, you can fly 400 feet around and above the building. So if the building is 1,000 feet, you can technically fly 1,400 feet AGL. But basically you're going 400 feet above that building, you know. So that's how you're allowed to do that. Okay, you must be 500 feet below the clouds. Here's a little corny picture for representation. You must be 500 feet below the clouds. And as you can see in the next slide, you must be 2,000 feet horizontally from the clouds. Don't ask me why. Obviously, it's common sense. Clouds obscure vision. You always need sight of your drone. Once again, 500 feet below clouds, 2,000 feet horizontally from the clouds. You should also stay 2,000 feet away from the guy wires. It's not a law, but it's definitely a recommendation because you can get into some serious trouble and you do not want to fly your drone into a guy wire. Let's just say that 
2,000 feet away from guy wires, 2,000 feet horizontally from clouds. Easy to remember. 100 miles per hour is the maximum speed you can fly your drone at. I put a little Star Wars figure. Someone built a little drone. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I liked it, so I threw it in there. 100 miles per hour, maximum speed. Write it down. And you cannot operate your drone if you've consumed alcohol within the last eight hours. So say you were out at 2 a.m. last night and you have a commercial drone job at 7.30 a.m. That's that's not going to work. Your, you know, your vision can be impaired. Your motor function capabilities can be impaired. That is not legal. I'm sorry. And you cannot operate your drone if your legal limit is above... 0.04 actually say you drank heavily eight hours ago and your limit is still above that then you still can't fly your drone unfortunately <laughs> okay you cannot take your part 107 test if you've had a narcotic conviction in the past year simple as that i don't need to go into detail about it next your drone must be equipped with anti-collision lights that can be seen for 3 SM. SM is statue miles. That's just as important as 400, just as important as AGL, just as important as all of them together, okay? And 3 SM, statue miles. So you need those anti-collision lights on your drone, remember, 30 minutes before and after sunrise and sunset. And these lights need to be visible for three statute miles i mean it makes sense you know if the sun's not quite out yet and you're you're flying it 30 minutes before it comes up then it might be a little bit dark and it's going to be hard to see your drone if it doesn't have any anti-collision lights on all right this next one goes hand in hand you must have three sm visibility of your drone while flying at all times so even you know during the daytime you need to see your drone within three statue miles while you're flying at all times. You must report any damage done that exceeds $500 to the FAA. So, you know, if you're flying your drone and you do damage to something that isn't yours, that exceeds a $500 bill, then you need to report that to the FAA. You know, if it's something that you messed up of you know, so if you ran into someone's mirror on a car and it cost $300, then you as a good citizen should be paying for it out of your pocket because you damaged it. Say if your drone gets damaged, you know, that's your problem. You don't have to report it. I know that might cost more than $500, but that's your deal. Basically, if you damage someone else's property or anything other than your drone that exceeds $500, you have to report it. And you have 10 days to report it. If you report it within 11, I'm not sure what's going to happen. You might get a slap on the wrist. At least you're still doing the right thing. And that's what the FAA wants to see is people be honest because we're trying to build an honest drone community so we don't get screwed over by unrealistic rules and law changes. You must file a report. With the FAA, if you seriously injured someone or hospitalized someone within 10 days. So I'm saying if someone has a little tiny scratch or a bruise from you hitting them with your drone, you know, address that situation. But if they're hospitalized, you have to report that to the FAA. They want to know that kind of stuff because that is reckless driving and you'll have to explain that to them. Okay, this isn't every important key term to remember but in my opinion it's the most important ones okay let's continue latitude and longitude check this out pay attention to the shape of your mouth while saying them latitude latitude that's the shape it's flat latitude longitude longitude it just makes sense i feel like that's all i really need to say that's all i had to really realize in order for me to remember Latitude, flat, horizontal, longitude, vertical. PIC. PIC, think of PIC as in you. So if they're saying the remote PIC, they're literally saying you. PIC, it means pilot in control. CTAF. CTAF is a radio frequency pilots use to communicate, and so is Multicom. 
It's used to provide communications, essentially to conduct the activities being performed or directed from a private aircraft. So there are both ways of communication, CTAF and Multicom. Write them together, that's really what it comes down to. AGL and MSL, I explained what AGL was in the numbers, in the important numbers, but MSL is a mean sea level. So based off this photo, it's 5,000 feet above mean sea level. Lance. Lance is a organization. It's an approved airspace operation within the parameters of your part 107. So basically you contact these guys if you need to get authorization that doesn't require authorization from air traffic control. And you can almost get instant approval with Lance. So you open up an app, you request, you know, approval, and you basically get it or you don't get it. So you can fly your aircraft in kind of restricted airspaces. There's an app called Aloft where it will do the same thing. Air traffic control, ATC. Write ATC down equals air traffic control. And those are the operations outside of the parameters of your part 107 that would require a waiver. So you're basically contacting the guys that are in this tower right here. And you know, if you need to fly in some serious airspace, you need to get permission from these guys. VFR, visual flight rules. It's just a good key phrase to remember. Just write it down. Put it in the memory bank visual flight rules this picture is basically just saying there's a lot of rules that we have to follow as pilots you have to be aware of everything at all times basically here's the nato alphabet you know alpha bravo charlie delta echo you should not have to remember every single one of these but the faa just basically wants you to understand what kind of communication and language pilots have to use and they want you to respect it there's a lot of information to take in if you're going to be a drone pilot or a real pilot zulu means universal time you don't need to figure out how to calculate to get zulu time though okay and i think we are just about to wrap it up. The angle of attack. The angle at which the cord of the aircraft's wing meets the relative wind. The angle of attack influences the aircraft's behavior while in mid-air. It is one of the main factors affecting lift, and airplanes need a constant source of lift to be able to fly. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I made it simple enough for you guys to understand and not be too overwhelmed with. So if you guys enjoyed the video and if I helped you out a bit, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And let me know if you guys want any other informational drone content. Thanks, guys. Peace out.